Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, yes, we are a webinar. Um, you can call us that. We won't be too offended by it. <laughs> um, that we do here um, out of the library, Nebraska Library Commission every week. Um, the show is free and open to anyone to watch. Um, and we do it live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Lasts for about an hour, give or take. Uh, the sessions are recorded every week, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. All of our recordings are available on our website in the archives section, so you can see all of our, we're in um, the very beginning now of our sixth year, so we've got five years worth of recordings out there that you can watch if you want to go and see all the things that have been on the show before. Um, and we do a mixture of things here, presentations, mini training sessions, book reviews, um, anything related to libraries, we're, we are happy to have it on the show. Um, and we have... Uh, Commission staff, the Nebraska Library Commission staff that do sessions sometimes, and we bring in guest speakers sometimes. And um, this week we have to have a mixture of that, as we do often. Um, next, sitting next to me is Catherine Brockmeyer, who is our grant program manager for the 21st Century Librarian program that we have here at the Nebraska Library Commission that we've had for quite a few years. I'm not sure how many years has well, been. Well, the first been... round was in 2004, and oh, then, okay. wow, and then we had a short break from 2009 to 2000 and 2008 and 2009, and then we started up again in 2010. Okay, so I've been doing it on and off for a long time. Um, and so she runs this program, the grant program for us, and um, she's got some of the people on with us this morning that have been participating in the grant program that are going to share um, how it went for them. So I'll just hand over to you to introduce who's up and um, what they're going to be talking about. Great. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. As Krista said, my name is Katherine Brockmeyer. I work here at the Nebraska Library Commission, and I work with the 21st Century Librarian Grant that's provided to the Nebraska Library Commission from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. We received the grant in 2010 and annually have been able to provide grants to public libraries for them to provide internships. So there are two reasons why we are having this webinar today. One is to share stories from the previous grant um, year and also then to describe this year's grant program and the steps to apply because the application deadline is coming up here in February and we'll get to the specifics of that in just a moment. Today we have with us uh, Evelyn Ost from Rock County Public Library and with her is her intern Cerise Clay and they will be sharing their experiences. And, um, and then, if possible, we have a, a couple of other internship supervisors who are logged in today. And if we're able to get some feedback from them, we'll share that as well. So that's the first part of the show. And then the second part of the show will be the introduction to the application process and, and a formal introduction to the internship program. So we'll turn it over to Evelyn and Cerise. Yep, you guys are unmuted, so you can go ahead. And I'll, I'll moderate with a few questions. Um, and we're going to start with Cerise because she has to get back to class. She's so kindly taken out time from her day to, to join us. Thanks for joining us, Cerise. Yeah. Okay, I didn't quite hear you. Good morning. There we go. Um, you may need to speak up just a little bit more or bring the microphone mm -hmm. closer to you. Um, otherwise, um, the people who are logged in may need to turn their microphone, their speakers up a little bit. So now I can hear you just fine. Um, we're just going to ask you a few questions today about your experience um, working as an intern. Uh, first of all, how did you hear about the internship program and why did you decide to apply? Uh, they send out a lot of flyers, especially up to the high school, looking for people that might be interested and the reason that I applied is to develop more social skills because my previous jobs didn't really involve a whole lot of interaction with others and also with being a senior everyone always is giving me advice for how to make college easier and some of the advice I receive is to know how to use a library so I figured if I started with my hometown library, then when I get to college, it won't be as scary. Super. 
Now, not to put you too much on the spot, but did you have a library card before you applied for the position? Yes, I did. You, and had you used the library very much, or maybe your school library? Yeah, when I was in grade school, after school, we would, myself and my sister would come up to the library and we'd hang out and read books until my mom got off work. So the, the, the faces at the library were familiar to you? Yes. Great, great. Well, um, what, what did you think you'd be getting yourself into when you first, when you got hired? Uh, when I first applied, I thought it'd just be like shelving books and checking people out and uh, helping them find a few books that they were looking for. Okay, after and then, started, go ahead. After I started, I realized that a librarian's job is a lot more than that. They're a service to the community, and they help with, like, research papers and entertaining, and they're a quiet spot to study. So you, you um, saw what, what, what goes on behind the scenes, and then you also saw the bigger picture, the bigger role that the library plays in the community. Yes. Okay, great. Um, what, what we'd really like to hear from you today is the exciting projects that you worked on um, this summer, and then also if you can talk about what's happened to those projects since your internship ended. Okay. Um, well, during my internship, uh, I watched some webinars, and I liked seeing what other people had done at their libraries and then um, using those ideas and trying to get them started in our community like the story walk mm -hmm. and um, over like the Christmas break we put up the 12 days of Christmas in the local businesses around town and had kids and their parents we encouraged them to walk around and read this story. Right, that story project's pretty interesting. Um, just to give a little bit of background information on it, uh, what happens is you take apart the book and you post the pages around town or along a trail or that sort of thing and people follow the story um, by following the path. Is that right? Yes. Great. And um, did you hear anything about that from anybody from the kids or the business owners? Have you heard any kind of feedback? Yeah, there was uh, 27 kids that completed the story walk and from their parents that came into the library while I was working one day, I heard that they said it was a great idea and they really enjoyed walking and reading the story with their children. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> That's, that's great to get that feedback. Doesn't that feel good to know that something you did had an impact? Yes. Yeah, that's really super. And that's um, really neat. I think the webinar that you may have watched was probably one of ours. It was probably mm -hmm. an Encompass Live recorded webinar about the story walk probably that happened in Hastings. Wanna, yeah, we did it. We had um, Jake on from Hastings Public Library about their story walk, yeah. Right. So kudos to um, Evelyn for helping you find a project and, of course, using our resources <laughs> to, to get some information. Um, let's see. Now, since you had your internship, you mentioned that you were working at the desk and you talked to some parents. So does that mean that you've been employed at the library since you've completed your internship? Um, I came in and filled in for Evie one day. Wow. Uh, during my Christmas break. Amazing. That is super. How'd, how'd that make you feel? <laughs> I felt like I was about ready to graduate high school and have to find a job and interact in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that's definitely um, a mature sort of activity to do, especially if you were there 
taking care of the place by yourself and um, overseeing everything that was going on. I want to go back to one thing that I, um, up here on this picture that's um, up on the webinar screen, you can see you with a couple of staff from the Norfolk Public Library. Can you tell us a little bit about your field trip? Um, we took a field trip to Norfolk to look at their library because uh, we're just a small uh, town library and uh, we just went and visited and saw what a bigger library uh, contains um, and how many more staff they have to help them. Right, that's a huge surprise, right? Yeah. And then you see that they specialize in different areas, whereas probably, as you noticed, in a small town library, that the staff have to do so many different things. They have to do more of the things that would be specialized in a larger library. Yes. Right. OK. Um, um, Evelyn, while we still have Cerise, is there, is there any kind of feedback that you would like to provide or any insight that you'd like to say about Cerise that she could respond to or anything? Well, when she worked here over Christmas, a little boy came in, and, and I thought it was kind of a cute story. I wasn't here, so I didn't hear it, but I thought maybe she'd like to share that with you, the comments he made to her. Mm -hmm. um, the little boy walked in through the doorway, and he looked at me, and then Becky was here helping me get started, and then he's like, you look nice. Are you old enough to run the library? <laughs> That's great. That's great. And you were. You were old enough to run the library. You'd had all that experience from this summer um, and orientation to all the different things that go on. You were, Evelyn felt that you were um, well equipped and prepared to, to work at the library on your own. That's, that's pretty funny. Evelyn, any other any other reflections you'd like to give on your experience with Cerise? Um, it was just a. It's we've done this for several years, and we just feel like the internship is a, a great asset to our community and to our library, and and uh, and it you know gives the students an opportunity to work in a professional setting that they you know normally probably wouldn't have in our small rural community and. Uh, we put the interns through a, a process when we hire them, just like we would any other job. They are interviewed, and they have to fill out a resume, and um, and then um, they go through that process, and then they're hired. And, and uh, we actually just hired a new director, and, and we kind of used a lot of the same questions that we asked the, uh, 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 the director with our interns. Of course, we revised them a little bit. But um, it's it's put them. Cerise said it, I asked her if that was uncomfortable for her, too too difficult, and she said no. She felt it was um, um, relaxing more than she thought it would be. And so we the, our board usually interviews two of our board members and one staff person, and uh, our assistant director went through the interview process this year. So uh, it's not all on my shoulders that way. <clears throat> Absolutely. And it's a good experience, I think, for, for interns to have a job interview and to complete an application and maybe they've never created a resume or a curriculum vita before. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say I, I feel like the grant writing process is easy and it's the reporting is not difficult. So that's kind of a plus when everyone's so busy. And I really appreciate that. It's, it's um, fairly easy to get handled, and, and uh, we have our interns uh, fill out a timesheet at the end of their day each day, and they record what they kind of did. So at the end of the um, time, we, we kind of know what they completed and everything. You can refer back to that timesheet. That works real well for us. Right. So it sounds like the administration for you, of course, you're uh, old. This is old hat for you now after several years, but. Um, we, you know, we do try to streamline the process for you and ask you to do some things along the way so that the reporting at the end is not uh, too burdensome. Thank you. Thank you. And, and um, 
I think it's important too in our small rural community for other students to see uh, someone young, young working in the library. Their high school librarian is probably near retirement and, and I'm retiring and, and our assistant director is you know, not exactly young either anymore. <laughs> and so I think it's just a, a good opportunity or it maybe kind of opens their eyes to, hey, that might be a great place to work someday, a library. Right. Right. It does serve as a recruitment tool. Um, it does give uh, people from especially the small rural towns to see that there is an opportunity for employment locally. Um, even if they leave the community, they may come back. Um, it's also a boon for the economy um, that you have somebody uh, who lives there or that comes back from school for the summer that is employed, gainfully employed. Um, so that's also a plus. Yes, definitely. Right. And, and I, I've, I've seen that actually, you know, in terms of impact on the community. I've seen that come through on the applications, and it's, that's definitely a plus. Um, something else that you might want to talk about is how was, she was there over the summer, an extra set of hands. I mean, that seems logical to me. Oh, yes. We really work them, and they, uh, they don't slough off. And uh, we, when I write the grant, I always think of the projects that need to be done. Uh, during the summer, and um, and uh, I list those, and so when they do come on board, I just have to refer to back to that. So the planning is in process, and we kind of refer back to that throughout the summer and try to make sure that we get all of those um, tasks um, at least touched on at some point, and so that makes it easy too. Um, and the other. And the assistant director also knows what those projects are. So if I'm not here, why we carry on? Great, that's right. Everybody seems to be on board. Mm -hmm. Yes, super. And that is something I. It's not a problem in our library, but I do think you need to have the staff to be committed to this and that they're willing to work with that intern because obviously one person can't work with them all the time or see that they get their project started. And, we have found that the students are capable of doing just about everything that we do. I, you know, of course, some of the administration tasks and the accounting and stuff, I probably don't spend a lot of time with them on, but they do touch on it. Um, and every year, our students have uh, come up with a project or uh, maybe something that we need, or they have an idea of something that we could change. It might be how we display some of our items. It might be like Cerise came up with the story walk or, or just different things that they would like to see us change or improve on. And that input is, I think, terrific because, you know, it's what the, what the uh, customer needs or would like to see. It's not what's best for us always. Right, a fresh perspective, some infusion of enthusiasm and new ideas. Yes, definitely. Right. Right, and you know that's that's great for the staff too to be refreshed, and especially if they've been working there for a while, they it's a chance for them to renew their enthusiasm for the work because they see it through a fresh set of eyes. Yes, right. Um, let's go back to Cerise and put you on the spot just for a second, and there's no pressure for you to say yes, but you are a senior now in high school, and you're going to be looking at um, your your. Uh, educational opportunities and your career opportunities and did you have a chance to learn a little bit about um, schooling and library science or you know did you have a chance to kind of think about the different kinds of jobs that you could have working in a library? Uh, yeah there's I don't know and again, I put you on the spot, so I really don't want to press, you know, give you any kind of pressure or anything to that effect. But um, a lot of times when we have high school students, then they go on and possibly while they're uh, following whichever career or path that they want or anything like that, they might uh, do a work study or work in their college library. Um, some of our students seem to have a connection then with working in a library, and they consider that at least as part-time work. Um, some of them consider it as, a, as an actual viable career. So uh, j j just to be sneaky, we tried to rope you in, Cerise. 
<laughs> yeah, I think um, when I go to college, I might help in the college library, maybe, if they will let me. Sure. Sure, and we understand that people, some people are just looking, not just, but people are looking for a summer job and they feel that they would enjoy working in a library. And we also understand that uh, some of our students are already on their career path and they're already on their educational path and they have their chosen field and we're excited for that. Um, one of the things that we do, not to you necessarily, Cerise, but one of the things that we like to do is stress that people come to the world of library work and professional library work from all walks of life. We have uh, people who get their masters, let's say, in biological sciences, and then they go back and get their masters in library science, and they work in a college library in their field. So there's a, a way, you know, we, we try to plant seeds with the people who work in the libraries as an intern, just to give them uh, something maybe in the back of their mind that someday um, they might be interested in, in coming back to the library to work. Yeah. So... All right, Cerise, thank you so much for your time. What an impressive, uh, what a huge impression I think that you have made on your library and on your community. Um, you, 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 worked, you worked hard. Um, it seems to me that you really had a professional presence at your library and with your follow-up with the story walk, that is so exciting. Congratulations on all the hard work that you did. Thank you. And thanks, Evelyn, for your input. Of course, we always appreciate hearing from you in terms of the process of applying for a grant all the way through um, what goes on during your internship all the way up to the reporting. Thanks again for your insight. Certainly. Glad to help. Sure. OK. OK. Um, what do you want to go to next? Let's see. Yeah. Have we heard? Thank you again. Um, we're going to go on and talk with, if possible, with um, Mimi Smith from Schuyler. If if she has a microphone, otherwise she was going to just maybe type in some comments and I was going to share those. Mm -hmm. yep. Mimi, you're unmuted if you want to try and talk. Okay, am I coming through? Perfectly. Yes, good morning. Oh, excellent. Good thank, morning. Thank you, and thank you um, so much for joining us. Sure. Um, do you have any specific questions that you have for me, or do you just want me to give you a little bit of an overview of... Um, how the process has worked for us the last few years. Right, that, yep, how the process has worked for you, any of your um, big impressions. And then also, um, what I like to stress uh, with your project is that you don't typically hire in the summer. You typically hire in the fall, and I just kind of wanted to hear a little bit about why you might choose to do that and how that works for you and how you um, do your recruiting um, for applications. Okay, well, uh, recruiting, the main thing that we do is we um, contact the counselor at the local high school and um, ask them to spread the word that we have an internship. Um, we've also mentioned it at city council meetings. Um, I've contacted the librarian at the um, local high school and um, asked her to put a bug in the ear of some of the students that she thought might be good candidates. So. Um, Right. We've gone a variety of different routes to um, introduce the idea to people in the community. And you've uh, had a variety of interns, too. You haven't always had high school students, have you? No, ours have always been high school students. They have. Okay. Yes. And Yes. Just to stress, they, they, they don't need to be um, high school students. In fact, they don't need to be uh, in school at all. They could be... Um, uh, in between jobs or they could be, uh, we've had stay-at-home moms who decided to give it a shot and see if this was something that they might be interested in and actually it was a way for the library to kind of feel them out and see if this is a possible employment for them and that did work out for them. So um, we don't need to have traditional students, we don't need to have uh, college students who are in the library science program either, but um, a lot of our interns are high school students. Yes, they are. And um, we actually have it on our um, library WordPress page. We do have an internship um, application on there and um, information about the internship and how to apply. So we have encouraged um, applicants 
to look at that and um, to apply online. That gives me an idea also of what their skill level would be. Um, so that helps us out to know, you know, where they're coming from. Um, and then I'll touch a little bit on the um, question that you had for me about um, why we hire at a different time of the year. Um, specifically last year, um, we had a, or this past summer, we had a new staff member and we also had a practicum student. And so um, I thought at that time it would be just best for us to do our internship after that um, because we had enough things, enough new people in the library at one time and um, just do not want to have chaos reigning because of too many new people not being comfortable. So um, that was our main reason this past year. Can't tell you right off the top of my head why, um, why we have done it in the past. Summertime has just not um, been the most feasible time for us in the past. Doesn't mean that it won't in the future, but it's just worked out better for us for a variety of reasons. Right, and, and one reason why we have the application process so early in the year is because we did hear from people who were looking for summer employment for hiring for the summer that they wanted to be competitive with other uh, hiring agencies or anybody else that might be hiring because they uh, we used to have the application a little bit later in the winter, early spring, and by the time the library found out whether or not they got the award, they kind of missed the boat in terms of recruiting any, you know, uh, the, the, the students that they were hoping to hire. Um, but as, you know, here as Mimi has shared, uh, it does not need to be a summer employment. In fact, um, it can be spread throughout the year. Um, this year, things do need to wrap up by September. Typically, it's through to the next March, but because our federal grant is wrapping up um, this year, it does have to be, it will have to be a summer and early fall um, uh, project. Did you want to talk a little bit about um, any specific intern experience that you've had, any um, one, you know, story of impact that you would like to share, Mimi? Well, we've had... Um our students come in and do a variety of things for us. We try to give them an overall view. So we don't necessarily have specific big projects planned for them, but um, some of the things that they've helped with that might not fall into our normal um, everyday processes and so on were um, one year when we received all of our computers for the, um, for the broadband grant, um, our interns helped set, we had, we had a good number of computers come in and so on, and they helped unpack and set up and get organized and so on before we had the tech people come in. And that really uh, helped um, staff not to have to do that um, so that they could take care of, you know, our patrons and so on. Um, we also had one time where uh, something happened with one of our databases. Actually, it was a database that we have of, of kids that have um, permission to use the uh, Internet. Um, you know, we maintain that so that we can make sure that, um, you know, we're complying with SEPA rules and all that. And our database got corrupted some way, and one of our interns rebuilt that for us. She had to check records, uh, she had to check permission slips and reline the, um, match up the data on the database because the lines had gotten um, disorganized and so on. So, so that was quite a task. Uh, she spent a lot of time doing that that year. Um, we have, oh, and we're one of the libraries too that, um, sometimes split up our internships. So we have two people rather than just one, and that's what we're doing right now. So we have uh, two people working on their internship actually right now, and they just started last week. And so they are working different days of the week. That way we have, um, for a month here, we will have extra help for a whole month. Um, and and that'll, the nice thing about that is that sometimes helps us get caught up. 
you know, sometimes you can get really behind just because of things that happen. And so we will have extra help here um, every day for a month, and that will be nice. They'll get to see um, everyday operations, but we'll have extra hands to help us out. Um, and one time in the past, we had two interns, and the thing that helped us out with them is that when we were taking them through orientation and some of the other things, they were here on the same day, and so we did not have to repeat ourselves in the whole process of orientation and training and so on. That's a good hint there. Yeah. Well, um, what else can I tell you? Uh, just, you know, if you've heard back from your interns or have they stuck around as volunteers, have you kept in touch? Oh, uh, we have with some. Um, and Usually it's been like a one or two year thing and then, of course, they're off on, you know, their their roads to adulthood and their projects in life. Um, but we have had uh, some of them do some other work for us after their internship and it just based on it was based on on need here in the library at the time and what worked into their schedule and so on. Um, so we had a staff change at one time and so we were in the um, hiring process and really didn't have a good candidate for a while. So one of our interns did come back and work for us for a while. Um, and then he has since um, joined the military, so he's not around to help us out anymore. But that was really nice, having somebody that had already gone through, you know, a lot here and he could just step in. Absolutely. And so we, yeah, so we were really um, pleased about that. And it looks like we might be doing that again here. Um, we had a person that uh, retired, and then when somebody else left, uh, we kind of drug her back from retirement, and so she's helped us out. But we want to let her retire again. <laughs> so a previous, <laughs> yeah, so a previous intern is probably going to come in and help us out again for a while. Um, I know that she will have other things happening in her life down the road where she won't be able to stay with us for a long period of time, but she's got the background that she can come in and help us out. Um, you know, temporarily, and she will have good skills to take with her um, along the way. And and we've heard that on several occasions, and that's just absolutely wonderful that you, you're able to plug them right in. They've already had their orientation. They're familiar with your, your library. They're familiar with your other staff, um, just like Cerise. Cerise was able to um, pitch in and help just probably on maybe short notice, too. And so um, for your interns to to uh, become employed or be hired or work temporarily and that sort of thing, that's, that's just been um, a, a great uh, side benefit for these libraries, especially in these uh, smaller towns where you may not want to spend all that time orienting somebody who may not be around for very long and they're doing temporary work. So congratulations, Mimi, on all of your um, successful internships, and we look forward to hearing about this year's with your two interns. Okay, well, we um, are really appreciative of the funding to help us do that, and it's a wonderful asset in the community. And um, it's nice to know that the kids take skills with them wherever they end up. And again, um, as you mentioned to Cerise, uh, you know, she's got some background, and that might really be helpful for some of these when they're um, looking for financial aid through schools and so on, where they give, give them work-study programs later on. So. Right. Absolutely. Super. Well, thanks, Mimi. Thank you. Yeah, we do have actually a comment from someone that relates to that. Robin Quinn, who's at our Hastings Memorial Library here in Nebraska, typed in and said, um, just a thought, even if interns don't become librarians, they have inside experience and knowledge of libraries that will make them amazing advocates for us. Certainly. So I can definitely see Cerise going out there and saying, libraries are great. I worked at one for a while. You should totally go use it. <laughs> And, and support it, and yeah. And that's one reason why many libraries hire teams, because they are looking to refresh their team programming and hope to be uh, eye candy or storefront. Uh, I, I can't think of what that term is. And it, it's okay to plug that, uh, to include that in your application process to say that you're looking for a younger face, you're hoping that they may... Um, show, uh, you know, what to bring to bring um, the younger set into the library. That's absolutely fine. 
we've we've heard that time and time again and and they do um, hopefully take that with them as they grow into adulthood and um, and go through their life path whatever that might be who knows they they could be advocates for a library they can sit in on the library board um, they will take more maybe be more likely to take their own children to the library so absolutely, we want them to be lifelong library users and advocates. Thanks for sharing that, Robin. OK, um, let's see here. Just wondering if Rose um, mm -hmm. yep, from La Vista is able yep, to Rose um, Barthel from La Vista Public Library. But she does not have a microphone, though. Okay. Um, but I told her she can type in anything she wants to say and share it with us. Um, I'm not sure how long it might take her to type in. So That's I don't okay. Know if you want to, uh... Rose, I tell you what, I'm going to go through the uh, a quick PowerPoint presentation, and if any of the internship supervisor or director, she happens to be the director, um, care to weigh in on any part of the uh, PowerPoint presentation, this this would be a perfect um, way to do that. Why don't you type in your comments, and I'm because I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Well, just 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 say one thing, which it sounds very successful. Because of their participation in last year, um, they already have another intern interested for this year. Right. So, so the buzz, it's a rolling thing, it keeps coming back. Yeah. Right, and that was a really neat program because they uh, went with uh, somebody from their teen advisory board, and so mm -hmm. I have a feeling. I just wonder if it's somebody else that caught wind of the, you know, that mm -hmm. was interested in it, and and it would like to be the one chosen to do it this year. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one thing is that you can have a person in mind to um, some some of some of these libraries actually um, have kind of done a selection process, not necessarily a hiring process. They might want to do that formally, but they have someone that they know that it would be interested in becoming an intern if they receive the grant. So yes, they talk to each other, and the fact that the intern was paid was huge. <laughs> that helped out a lot. That there's actual money. Right. Um, it's not one of those unpaid internships that you hear. No, it's a fab. Yeah. You get the experience, but you also get the the, the funding. That's mm -hmm. great. Well, let's go through this um, PowerPoint presentation. We have about 17 minutes left, and I think that we'll be able to get through this, and especially if we have any comments along the way or questions, because I think we might have some potential applicants on the line today, and we're really excited to have you here. Um, we don't want to overwhelm you with too much information, but this PowerPoint will be available uh, as in addition to the recording of this um, so that you can go back and look through this um, as well as the actual um, internship grant page which I will visit last. Just an introduction here to the program and to recap some of the things that have already been covered today by our fabulous internship supervisors and our intern that joined us today. We are talking about 20, Laura Bush 21st Century Library and Grants um, that um, are funded through a grant, federal grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services to the Nebraska Library Commission. And Nebraska Library Association is uh, a big partner with us on this. Um, in the past, they were able to secure outside funding from a, a private uh, foundation, and so they were able to help us match um, some, some funding for our grants in the past. Um, few years and so we appreciate the partnership with NLA um, they send a couple of representatives that sit in on the review panel they stay in touch with us and um, they help promote this program for us for all of us um, because it's it's a benefit to the NLA as much as it is to the Commission and to the libraries that receive the grants so here, here are the big points to know for this round, for this cycle. The deadline for applications is, um, it's an online application, and applications are due by February 18th, 2014, this year, um, by 4.59 p.m. We have to have a cutoff time somewhere. So uh, get your application started and, and entered and press submit uh, by 4.59 p.m. Central Time uh, on February 18th. The award date, um, the official award date is March 17th, so libraries will know whether or not they've received a grant. They will also find out in what amount. Some libraries um, um, ask for the full amount of $1,000. In the past, uh, some libraries have been awarded $500 or $750. Um, some of them requested that, and some of them were awarded that just based on our distribution of funds and what we were able to um, fund for libraries. Um, and those are, uh, I'll talk about stipends in a second. 
the eligibility for the libraries, those who may apply are accredited public libraries in Nebraska. And um, we will talk about partnerships here in just a second. And I know we're, just as a related thing, we are, we've just released new accreditation standards. But just so though any accreditation level counts, it doesn't have to be a certain one of the... Any accredited, of, any, yeah. any accredited level. Just want to make sure in case someone asked. Mm, <laughs> absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. Any any of the any of the accredited accreditation <laughs> levels are are eligible, and there is a website which we will um, visit in a moment. Now, now hiring at your library .gov slash internships asp. So, what are the goals of our grant, our federal grant? Um, that interns become involved in real library work, that they're introduced to the varied and exciting work that happens in libraries. It's a recruitment tool. Um, you have a captive audience. You can talk to them a little bit about your own personal uh, reasons for working in the library. You can talk to them about education opportunities, talk to them about um, opportunities for employment in various kinds of libraries. Um, it's an enlightened view, an enlightened view for them. They find out that there's so much more to library work than what they see that happens um, with shelving and checking in and out books. That's what we hear time and time again. And um, one of our other goals is that they find out what the role of technology in libraries is. A lot of times that's also uh, very insightful for them. For the library, it provides financial assistance to expand a program or complete a project, and it also brings in fresh ideas. So uh, what, what is this program and what does it do? The grant awards are stipends. You are awarded, let's say you are awarded $1,000. You put in your request for payment and the check is written to your library for $1,000. How you choose to allot that in terms of um, uh, payment to the intern, it is for payments, uh, it is for salary only. Now by salary I mean that um, they can be a contract worker um, with the library and they are contracted to work so many hours um, and receive $1,000. Sometimes that is 100 hours, but when you, it, they can be paid hourly, um, and then you need to discuss with your, um, your city office, you know, how it's going to be done with taxes, whether or not taxes are going to be taken out. Are they going to be hired as a temporary employee? Are they going to be hired as a contract worker? Um, <clears throat> in some of the smaller libraries, getting paid $10 an hour is a bit controversial for um, uh, with other staff that are working there that have been working there for a long time and don't make $10 an hour. So you can kind of think about that. You could ask for $750 and ask for 100 hours from your from your intern, or you could ask for 1,000 hours and have them, or $1,000 and ask them to work more than 100 hours. Um, that's entirely up to you. But again, it's a stipend. You receive, you receive one check, and um, it is for payment to the intern. It does not cover supplies. It does not cover mileage or anything to that effect. So um, it's it's all the money, unless tax unless taxes are withheld, goes to the intern. Um, as Mimi mentioned, you can hire more than one intern. You can hire one intern. You could ask for $1,000 and then mention that you would like to hire two interns, something to that effect. Um, there is the introdu introduction to the world of library work um, so that they see what goes on on the front lines as well as behind the scenes. Um, you're expected to do an orientation to basic duties all the way from checking in books and out, um, all the way through uh, processing of books, interlibrary loan, uh, maybe some administrative duties, uh, sitting in on a, on a council meeting or a board meeting, those sorts of things. Everything from even more than maybe in some ways than your current employees get to do. They, you know, if, especially if they work the desk most of the time and don't do processing of books or something to that effect. We'd like for your intern to see the inner workings of the library from, from the inside out. A lot of times you might have a special project in mind or it, depending on the intern that you hire, find out you know that they have some special skills and abilities that you would like to capitalize on and help them shine through um, with a special project. It sounds to me like Cerise got to choose a couple of webinars to watch and she was inspired and that's how she came up with the story walk. So that's another thing to do. Um, you can partner with other libraries. We have had libraries that partnered um, with, a, with a community college library and so the, the student split their time and were supervised also uh, by, by someone at the college library. We also 
uh, students can also do some of their hours in school library. If it's done over the summer, you know, the school library may be closed, so you might take that into account. And then there's the evaluation. The, the intern does a baseline evaluation. It's online. Basically just asking them what they, what they think that they might be getting themselves into. And then at the end, they, they do a follow-up survey and then the supervisor completes two surveys, one about the intern and then one about the whole internship program. What happened in 2013? We awarded 21 grants to 18 libraries and the total amount that we were able to award was the 20250 They ranged, we had one $500 grant, one $750 grant, and then some $1,000 grants. Uh, we, in, in the larger cities, in Lincoln and Omaha, they have multiple branches, so they are eligible to apply for multiple, to, for multiple grants. Um, what we like to see is a wide variety of libraries that apply. We had big libraries, we had small libraries, we had libraries in the east, we had libraries in the west. So we really encourage libraries from across the state. We're looking for a variety of libraries to apply. What happened uh, with the specific projects? One of them, uh, very common, is if you hire for summer reading, you ask them to hire with, uh, to conduct, assist with summer reading programming. A lot of times they set up their own modules. They plan them from beginning to end. Uh, sometimes they plan the end of the summer party, uh, those sorts of things. And um, there's also, because you, if you bring in younger interns, they might have some insight into what they would what you might hear from them about what might go into the juvenile and young adult collections. Um, one, one student went around and solicited donations for the summer reading program and the uh, prizes. And then um, uh, somebody else organized and implemented the youth book discussion group. And down here you can see um, one of the supervisor's um, feedback and we'll talk about uh, the intern's perspective and the supervisor's perspective in just a moment, but here you can see it's such a bonus to have an intern to be able to stretch our staff to create new projects. The addition of these short films, which we'll learn about in a second, on our website increased our visibility online, and patrons enjoyed seeing their kids featured in a film. Again, we talked about the students learning about the role of technology in the libraries, and of course, perhaps they have some skills that haven't um, been made, that staff may not be aware of yet. Um, so here we had the completed videos, an instructional video, um, prepared pictures. We've had um, students start library Facebook pages, do web page design, um, add things to the website and um, create public relation materials on the computer, such as flyers and newsletters. So here's the video project that I wanted to talk to you about. This intern uh, produced promotional videos about the summer reading program. And so they learned how to use new equipment, and they learned how to use new uh, computer programming to uh, produce their uh, footage. And so on the right side, you see what the supervisor had to say um, about this. And so it was a new project for them. Um, it sounds to me like perhaps the staff learned right along with the intern. So it's a way to um, to stretch your to stretch your vision to um, you know think outside the box, as they say, um, and uh, learn some new things. And it might be a nice way for the staff to feel a bit more adventurous because they are learning right alongside somebody else. And here are what some of the interns had to say. I learned about the broad variety of goals. Um, there's a lot more to work, more work than most people realize. And what different kinds of skills you need to have, science, math, and business. Um, there was somebody who said they haven't decided on a career, but they would definitely put being a librarian on their list. And um, here's someone that said, I learned librarians need to have very extensive knowledge regarding the operation of computers. So technology um, really did come to the forefront in that person's internship. Uh, Beatrice Public Library got coverage in their local newspaper, so we do encourage uh, the libraries to send out a press release or to inform their local newspaper that they've hired an intern, and especially if they have some specific projects that they're working on. Here's Cerise, she, Rock County Public Library posted on their own Facebook page a picture of Cerise. 
um, visiting the Norfolk Public Library. And I won't go into too great of detail about the eligibility and expectations because you can read that on the rather lengthy <laughs> informational page about the, the internship um, grant program, which I do encourage you to read from very beginning to very end. Um, but they submit the application online. They complete the internship this year before September 30th. They assign a supervisor and they give credit to IMLS, NLC, and NLA and all their publicity about the project. Um, you don't really see the application until you actually get into it. Um, so if you open up the application and you want to see the questions and then you want to type them into Word and work on them for a while, then you can copy your, your narrative from Word and, and you know, make sure you've done your spell check and everything and then you can paste it back into the boxes in the online application. That's fine. These are the questions that you're going to be asked. What is the background? What is your reason for participation? You know, are you are you looking for fresh eyes? Do you want to um, give gainful employment to somebody who's local, especially if you're in a small town? Um, what is your underlying need or opportunity? That could be several different things. Perhaps there's a specific op, uh, project that you would like to complete. Perhaps you would like to have um, an extra set of hands to um, get through summer reading um, program. Um, perhaps uh, you would like uh, this if it's a high school student, you would like for them to uh, have some visibility in the community. There are lots of different reasons, so I don't want to pigeonhole you. You know, I don't want to pigeonhole you into um, giving the right answer because there are lots of different reasons. We do ask for a schedule of activities. We want to know that you've thought this through. Um, if you have some specific projects, or you can say depending on the intern that you choose, and and then we want to know later on, you know, sort of who who you hired and what you are going to work on. Um, what the student's role is going to be, a general orientation plan. We do want to know that you are orienting them into all aspects of library work. And then a timeline if you have a general idea for summer. Um, and then also, uh, you know, you could give a specific timeline, week one, do these sorts of things. And you're not held, you don't need to be held fast to that. But we do want to know that some thought has been put into this. Um, there is a, a, a resource out there called Mass Blast. And uh, it's online and there's a link from the internship orientate uh, the internship page that you can go and get um, some examples of orientation schedules. So look for that. And then what is the effect? What are the anticipated benefits to your student, to your library, and to your community? Those are the three main questions. Um, you do have to have um, the the director of your board, your president of your board sign off on this. It's an electronic signature, but they do need to be on board with this. Um, what's going to happen after you submit your application? Preference will be given to proposals that include your schedule of activities, your orientation, that demonstrate that you will have an orientation to all library service functions, and that you have a commitment to meeting grant expectations. We like to hear that you're, you know, that you're um, going to do your evaluations. We like to hear that you are, you know, that you've looked at the goals and reasons for us having this grant, and that you would like to help further our uh, expectations for, on our end. And what's encouraged, we, we would love to hear that you have uh, a partnership um, or even just to hear that you might make a visit um, to a larger library or an academic library or something to that effect. And we do encourage first-time applicants. Um, we would love to have uh, some, uh, some new blood. We've, we've got some that we have some libraries that have received a, a, an internship grant almost every year, and we love it because they, they have developed their program, but we also want to give... Um, new applicants that a chance to give this a try. Speaking of application review, if you would like for a staff member of the Nebraska Library Commission to review your application before you submit it, they could provide you with some feedback about some areas where there, some things might be fuzzy or um, maybe misunderstood or um, you know, ask you to beef up one part to be more explicit in terms of one section of the application. So if you want to fill out, complete the application narrative and submit it um, to me, I will pass it on to the independent reviewer who's not sitting in on the panel. And they will give you specific feedback um, on your responses to the questions. And just, just to make sure that your vision, you know, what, find out what your vision is and um, to see if that's lining up with the sorts of questions that are being asked on the application. Yeah, I've done that for it. And it's nice to have another set of eyes on your application who is not involved in what you created so they don't have any sort of already 
preconceived notions about it, and I'm also not involved in, like, as Kathleen said, the decision-making process, so nothing from them has any input. I just look at it as an outside, completely not knowing a thing. Does this seem to be doing what it needs to do to be, you know, evaluated um, right. correctly? Right, right. We provided Krista with the goals and expectations of our federal grant, and then what we outlined to you, the applicant, as the, our goals and expectations. And then she looked at, looked at the responses and um, tried to see if they meshed. So... And it was a strong, how many did you do? One, two? I don't it remember. It was a strong application. Yeah. I remember at least the one that I do recall. It was a strong application and was funded. So here I am. I'm Catherine. I am the grant manager, grant program manager. I'm available by email or on the phone. And I would love to hear from you. You know, uh, just any questions that you have about the program, about the application process, um, just anything to that effect, um, I'm here to help. And again, uh, I do highly encourage first-time applicants, or if you did apply in the past and were not funded, I highly encourage you to submit to me your ideas or your narrative sections, and we will get those reviewed with some feedback, some constructive feedback to you. Um, while you were doing your talk, Rose did co did comment and say um, they she will be submitting a grant for the upcoming year. As she said, they had someone interested. Um, they're partnering with an organization called Project Search which she says, has, she says helps students with special needs. And I looked up the website, and what it is is they're an organization that started in Cincinnati where they help, um, their primary objective is to secure competitive employment for people with disabilities, de de developmental disabilities. So, um, and they're actually, from their website, they're having their um, annual conference is going to be in Omaha this July. Exciting. So maybe something is going on. <laughs> I assume that might be related to why you're, you might be doing that. But, so, um, yeah, partnering with the local, of course, this mm -hmm. is partnership with the library. But also, if you have a specific project like that and you want to partner with an organization, mm -hmm. absolutely. Go for it. Just a quick question. Um, would uh, letters of support be encouraged if you're wanting to partner with an organization? Is that something I, that would, could be I, I think that, or um, I, I don't know that uh, they're not required. It's possible in the narrative just to say that um, you have uh, you have an understanding with the organization and you have their full backing. Mm -hmm. Something to that effect, just to know that you've communicated with them and they have endorsed your project. That's what we'd like to hear. Yeah, absolutely. So here I have pulled up now hiring at your library .nebraska.gov or .ne.gov. And over here on the left is internships. Click on that to go to the internships page. This is the brief, the uh, quick and dirty information that you need to know. Read it carefully. And then down here, application process. If you wish to apply, please read first before you apply. And it's lengthy. There's a print version. You can print it out so you don't need to look at the screen. And maybe there are things you want to highlight. This should give you everything, hopefully, that you need um, to complete your application or to think about uh, what kind of internship you would like to have even before you think about completing it. Here's the Mass Blast Design and Internship Wiki page. Oh, they didn't take it down. Tell me they didn't take it down. Oh, no! It's been there forever. <gasps> I think they took it down. Oh my goodness! I'm so sad to hear that. Um, if I can find if I can find it, I will update the URL. I'm glad that I checked that. I hadn't heard from any applicants that that was a problem, but um, I, I can also I, I tell you what I'll do. I will post a couple of example um, orientations that have been submitted by other libraries. Okay, I will do that. Because a lot of them use the Mass Blast to mm -hmm. as their um, example, yeah. right? Golly gee, that was a huge project. I'm sorry to see it might be gone. Mm -hmm. I will search a little bit more, but I have a feeling it's not there. So award information, eligibility, application review, and award administration. And down here is the special special link. There it is. General information: the application is to com be completed online by 4:59 on February 18th, 2014. Um, and then you receive, after you submit, um, the person, the director will receive a, a, an email stating that this has been submitted and it does have all of the responses that were on there. So this is what the application looks like. And if you want to go in and take a peek at it, that's fine. You don't have to 
push submit or anything like that. You have to sign your life away and the library director signs off on it and the library board president signs off on it as well. So um, in the past, I do want to say that um, we have allowed the funding to go to the foundation instead or the friends of the library. That's not the typical way to do it. Typically it goes um, to the library through the city. Um, we send the check to the library and it's processed that way. But if that's going to be, if it's going to be an issue for you to go through your city, but you have the backing of your foundation or something, put that in, in the application or contact me in advance um, so that we can discuss this and figure out how you're going to, um, how you're going to communicate this in your application so there's no confusion. Great, which means call me, send me an email. Let's avoid confusion. Let's have a great application process. Let's, um, you know, get you energized about having an internship and figure out a way for you to communicate what your vision is to us, to the grant review panel. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yeah. Um, let's see, does anybody have any questions or comments or anything? Type them into the questions section of your interface. Um, or Rose, if you have anything else to add about what you guys have been doing or will be doing in La Vista. Um, or if Mimi or uh, Evelyn have any more. I'm just scrolling down so you can see what, what this all says. Okay. All right. Oh, Rose yes. does say she's assuming it. Lindsay. Um, Lindsay, who's their teen, um, teen library board coordinator, she says she's assuming Lindsay will also be submitting an application of one of her teens as well. So there may be more than one application coming from out of them, I guess. Oh, okay. We can award we can award one grant per library. Ah, okay. So, so one library can ask decide. for up to one thousand dollars. If you choose to hire two interns out of that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but we cannot receive two grants, two grant applications from the same library unless they're multi-branch. So right. basically the only ones that are eligible to ask for more than $1,000 or multiple grants is Omaha and Lincoln. Yeah, she says, okay, thanks. Sure. So between the two of you, you're both trying to do, Lindsay's trying to do something and you're doing something project search, get together and decide how you might give you up a full thousand. Right. You could hire in two interns. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But it would just still be one application that mentions both projects in it. Right. They could do that. And the ah, maximum okay. that one library can ask for is a thousand dollars unless they're ask unless they're multi branch. Okay. So there we go. Yeah. And uh, there was um there was on one application last year um a request for funding for materials. And again it the stipend is funding for salary and if you have to you know set aside for taxes, but it's to go to the intern and there is no money for materials or mileage or anything for, like that. So you might need to get creative, mm -hmm. um, but, and, and perhaps this is an opportunity for you to go to your friends or your foundation and say, I have hired, we're hiring an intern, we got this grant or we're thinking about applying for this grant and we would love for you to come up with $100, $50 or whatever for this specific project. For, project. It might get them really excited about that. So that's another opportunity for you to do that. And if you do that in advance and you get some sign-off from your foundation or your friends and they say, yes, go for it, mention that in your grant application. Mention that you have them on board, that they're totally in on it with you. Um, the, the grant review panel will be very happy to hear that. Okay. I don't want to keep anyone any longer. I could go on and on, especially about the rewards of having an intern and the rewards for the intern and the library and the community. Oh, we did have a question come in, but it sounds like it was at the same time as you were talking about it from Robin again at Hastings Memorial. I know the grant doesn't require matching funds, but is it, is it allowable to have additional outside funds to go towards the internship? And that's sounds exactly great what you're to talking me. about. Yep. Just the internship money is just for salary, related to salary for the person. But then if you do need extra money for other stuff, absolutely go out and get it and use the internship as a, as a push to the other people saying, we're going to have this money, will you give us this money? make it work, make mm -hmm. it happen. Or if there's an outside organization that wants to contribute another $500 to make it a $1,500 internship for, for somebody, that's absolutely Sure, other money can also pay the intern too. It doesn't have to just mm -hmm. be for the extra materials or supplies or whatever. Right, yeah. exactly. I yep. hope that answered your question, Robin.
I have a feeling she's going to say yes or no. Let's see. <laughs> yes, she says thanks. She says yes. <laughs> she says thanks. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Right. So, um, contact me. Mm -hmm. Take take a really good look at this page mm -hmm. from beginning to end. Take a really good look at the application process page. It's lengthy. Go up. Go to the PDF. Print it out. Um, I will add uh, links to. I will post some example orientations for you all though. Mm -hmm. Um, so that you can see uh, what those might be. And I'll do them in Word so that, um, I'll do Word and PDF so that you don't have to type from scratch. Because, go ahead, lift somebody else's, go for it, I say. That's what people did from the Mass Blast wiki. Mm -hmm. I'm just sad to see that's going. Yeah. Hopefully we can try and search out and figure out what happened to it. Did it get moved somewhere or what, yeah. Okay. Okay, and the deadline is uh, in February, so you got time. February 18th, you have yeah, plenty of time, yeah, plenty absolutely. of time to, to find your supervisor, to figure out who your supervisor is going to be, to um, feel out whether there might be somebody that you might be interested in hiring, you know, kind of, you can feel that out in advance. Um, we actually had somebody who contacted me that somehow learned about the internships and said, I would love to have an internship this summer. Oh. Can you tell me um, about that? And she went to a library and said, I'd love to work at your library this summer. And they said, okay, we'll apply for an internship. Break. Ah, and they so did, the and they hired side, her. They said, I, match me up, find me, is there a library I can do this? That's right. Yes, yeah. And so, so somebody you, might come to you. <laughs> that's right. Or maybe you have a couple of volunteers that you think might make good interns, and you could talk to them ahead of time. You can't promise them anything, but <laughs> you could definitely talk to them ahead of time. Say, so we'll try it. We'll apply and see what happens. Yeah. Right. All right. doesn't look like any urgent questions or comments come in, so I think that's great. We have some great info and insight from the people who've done this before. Um, so get out there and apply. So that will wrap it up for today. Thank you, um, Catherine and Evelyn and Mimi and Rose and Cerise. I don't remember all the names. <laughs> um, so that will wrap it for this morning's um, uh, Encompass Live. It has been recorded, so it will be available later this afternoon for you to watch again or to share with colleagues. As will the PowerPoint. Yep, PowerPoint too. It will be up there. And any links were mentioned, I've got the link to the internship program. Um, and any libraries that mention, I'll link to their websites too if you want to go and check out those libraries who've been participating in the program. Um, the, all that information will be there as well. So that will wrap it up for today, but I hope you join us next week when our topic is Hot Titles for a Cold Month, um, where we've got some commission staff here. Um, Deborah Dracos, Michael Sowers, and Laura Johnson have gotten together. I'm going to give you some um, book recommendations um, for things that you can add to your collection, um, both fiction and nonfiction. So um, tune in with us, uh, sign up for that for next week, and you can see what new books and titles you might want to get for your library. Um, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. So if you are a big Facebook user, please go right ahead and like us there. You'll get notifications of when we have new sessions coming up, when a recording is available. Um, I always remind everyone, as you can see here, each Wednesday morning that the session's about ready to start, so pop over there and log in on the fly. Um, so keep up to date with us on our Facebook page if you are so inclined. And, and, and um, let me plug oh, sure. Nebraska Librarians Learning Together. Oh, yeah. There it is. There's ours. Um, join this community. There's a, an update almost daily, and if you scroll mm -hmm. down, um, you can see here that we had some scholarship students who graduated, yes. and so we posted their photos. So there is um, Monica Tidyman. She just got her bachelor's, and then if you scroll down a little bit more, there's Libby Munsell. Mm -hmm. She yep. she got her bachelor's, and so we were able to celebrate along with them, and um, you can help celebrate right along with us and weigh in on with your opinions on some of these posts. We'd love to hear from you. Get connected with our future librarians. We did. We did have one intern post on our wall talking about how, what a great time they had, and you know, thanking uh, Nebraska Library Commission for providing a grant to their library. So um, they did weigh in. That was great. Great. All right. All right. That will wrap it up for this morning. Then thank you very much, and we'll see you um, next time on Encompass Live. Bye.